Hey there! In this video, we're going to go through the process of creating seamless textures that can be used in your digital print and pattern files. Textures can be sourced from photographs like cloth, rust, wood grain, fabric textures, ink washes, pastel rubbings, or you could use crumpled or textured paper. Textures can also be created by using a variety of Photoshop filters under Filter, Filter Gallery. In today's demo, I'm using a photograph of cracked paint. I'm going to rotate this into the same portrait orientation as my artwork. The size of my artwork is roughly 10 by 12. I could either use this image as is or crop it down to a smaller size. Canvas size 10 by 12, and I'm going to crop off the bottom portion of this artwork. If I were to use this texture as is, most likely it does not repeat. We're going to offset this artwork to see how the seaming of the cracked paint looks. We can see that there's a distinct seam vertically and horizontally. The fastest way to seam a texture would be to select the area along the seam both vertically and horizontally. With my selection over top of the seam, we could see where I've made my choices. If I go to Edit, Fill, and change the contents from Pattern to Content Aware, what Content Aware does is it takes the visual information outside of the selection and brings it back into the inside. You can see that the computers made some quick decisions on where the seaming looks best. I'm going to offset this a second time just to see if there's any marks that could be visually distracting. In this case, the cracks with the strong vertical lines could be edited out by doing the same process of going to Edit, Fill, Content Aware, and clicking OK. I'm going to color reduce this artwork to either two to three colors. There's no need to have a texture with over three colors. We could define and fill this pattern into the artwork in multiple colorways to see how it renders out in the image. A second way would be to take this as a selection, drag the selection over into the artwork, and then start to paint bucket through those textures in the selection. Think of it as a stencil. I'm going to paint bucket this pattern fill using a pattern, making sure anti-alias is not checked and contiguous is not checked. The second way to use this texture in the artwork and I'm going to back up a few steps here, would be to make a selection, making sure anti-alias and contiguous is not checked, along the texture. And if you're inside the selection, you'll see an arrow with a rectangular marquee. I'm going to drag that from this file to the other file. With Paint Bucket, 
I can select now where that texture gets laid down. Maybe it eats into the original image that's underneath. So I'm using Paint Bucket, painting through the selection directly onto the artwork. So now you can see a distressed floral image in the original pattern. I might even paint that a tone-on-tone -tone version to give it a little contrast against the ground. And that's how you might use a textural pattern, both as a pattern fill and a stencil directly over top of your artwork.